News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And a very good morning to you. This is Newsline Live. We're broadcasting from the News First studios in Dorset Street in Colombo. And, uh, you know, if, uh, if you're a lawyer these days, I'm sure you, your friends must be calling you uh, and asking all sorts of legal questions because we have people who are trying to uh, amend uh, or bring amend the 19th to something called the 21st or the 22nd and all sorts of amendments. And uh, the, um, the uh, airwaves are washed with uh, all legal matters. But uh, we had pre-booked our uh, next guest, who is a columnist and an attorney at law. And he's right here. And uh, we thought we'd pose him the question whether any government is interested in optics or legal closure. Which is it? And let's find out from Mr. Ravi Pereira. Very good morning to you. Morning, Mr. Pereira. Pereira. Thank you very much for being on Newsline. Um, your maiden uh, appearance on television, I'm told. Yes. Uh, so thank you. Um, My pleasure. It's, uh, it's quite all right. You're only talking to me and that camera. Right. Uh, so <laughs> there's nobody else, but you know. Um, I, I thought that I'd pose you this question. Um, I caught, you know, what caught my eye was you wrote a, a, a nice uh, appreciation to the late Justice uh, Prasanna Jai Wadner. Uh, and in there, there was a line that you, you bemoaned the fact that in spite of a presidential commission and so on, uh, that there was no closure uh, on that matter. And, and so that's why I pose you this question. Are governments merely interested in the optics that appears to say, look, we are doing something? Or are they actually going after legal closure? Yes, s sadly, that's a valid question. Uh, because governments or the president who appoints these uh, commissions are acting under a mandate given by the people. And it, it appears that ultimately what happens with m most of these commissions is that they recommend further inquiries and the matter is just um, goes into a limbo of forgotten things. Right. So it's very sad. I mean, is it just a, just a sh some show or is, is there substance in appointing these commissions? Uh, people are. are quite justified in asking this question. And, and, and the public are going, uh, growing tired, I believe, of, uh, of natu these. Naturally, and I think they have lost, um, uh, their com their, there's no confidence in the system any longer when you, when you hear of a presidential commission being appointed. All that the public can assume is that there's going to be another long drawn out um, hearing from which there will be very little results. Yeah. So that's a sad reality. And, and um, be, for, for example, um, in this matter described by the Attorney General's department themselves as being the greatest uh, financial fraud ever inflicted on independent Sri Lanka was the issuance of Treasury bonds uh, by the Central Bank in February 2015. And it beggars belief almost that four and a half years later we are still waiting for legal closure we haven't had legal closure. And then, of course, there's the second one. No, no, no investigations ever done on the second one. The former government says that his response to that was that they've done a forensic audit. But our point is that there was no investigation done into it. You know, where did they get the money from? Who, did, who lent the money? Uh, in fact, are these monies have these monies ever been settled to the state banks uh, and so on. So there are various questions. Subsidiary companies have been borrowing, you know, and on what basis was the risk managed? Uh, I mean, I, I assume that the forensic audit, audit would have gone into these matters. Well, <laughs> the, the, the sad part is the forensic audit will uh, should give us a lot of detail as to where the the trading took place and the levels of the, the you know they buy they sell they they sell, and there was always the captive buyer which was the the state the captive funds meaning uh, the EPF ETF uh, National Savings Bank you know these are captive funds and uh, Governor then Governor Mahendran uh, does make a note saying that they can go for the captive funds. We had the former finance minister, then finance minister, Ravi Karunayaka, 
uh, call the, uh, the state institutions in and say, look, the interest rates are too high. I need you to bid low. But having those banks and institutions having bid low, uh, lo and behold, they found that the central bank issuing uh, at a higher rate uh, to the primary dealers, um, where there was one perpetual treasuries uh, limited. So, so you know, how does one how does one move on? How does one have legal closure and accountability? I think this is an instance of a tremendous failure on the part of the, uh, the, the state, uh, law enforcement agencies. Uh, I think the ball is on their court. They should, uh, should tell the public what they're going to do with all the evidence they have. Indeed. Uh, but what's because... Uh, the, once you lose confidence in the system, and treasury bills, sovereign treasury, uh, treasury bonds, the, the, these are these very, very, uh, very much dependent on the credibility of the state the value of a sovereign bond. And really? The state loses credibility. We have seen it happening in many countries. Yes. We are, we are in very uh, choppy waters, um, dangerous well, waters. Th thank God, of course, that Sri Lanka has uh, never defaulted. Uh, and so that holds us in good stead. But do you get the feeling that we are only hanging on to, uh, we are standing on thin ice? Certainly, and I read in the papers that foreigners are pulling out of treasury bonds. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, this this particular uh, situation with the treasury uh, bonds, I think it goes to the core of good governance. If such things uh, now the the scenario you are describing, you know, obviously it is not just uh, perpetual and the um, the, and governor, the governor. governor. There was a massive orchestration of things, especially state-controlled agencies. Indeed, so and and that that's my point. You see that uh, Arjun Mahendran and Perpetual Treasuries couldn't have done this on their own. It's obvious too, uh, and that is why I I also say that it is wrong for the forensic audit to be ordered by the central bank because that is the institution is that is at the core of this problem. It is they who issued the. Uh, treasury bonds. It was their governor. It was, you know, their arrangements with perpetual and so on and so forth that made this all happen. And then to me, it's like you're, you're, it's a home and home game because you are asking. I know, I know yeah. that you might say that. Look, the people conducting the uh, audits indi independent, are independent. Yeah, they're they're out, and outside, the, and, and the affected agency, the central bank. Yes. So they're asking for audit, uh, for forensic audit. I think is. Uh, is, I mean, it's reasonable. I is it? Yeah. I, I mean, you're, you're, you're I the mean, lawyer. Yeah, because the audit is not conducted by them. Yeah. It's conducted by a, a independent agency. But surely they, some of those matters will have to look at the actions of other officers also at the central bank, not just Arjuna Mahindran, who is obviously the governor. Yeah. Uh, I know that... But was it ordered by, uh, asked for by Arjuna Mahindran or his successor? The what the forensic the, audits? Yeah, yeah. No, the forensic audits ordered by, uh, suggested by the presidential commission inquiry, yeah. and uh, ordered by a uh, Dr. Indrajit Kumar Swami, uh, and then the current uh, the AG's department uh, apparently have said that uh, of the opinion that uh, they shouldn't be uh, all revealed, that they will let the let them know which parts can be revealed because there might be an element that they need to use uh, uh, some element of it for evidence in, in the court. So frustrating for the people. Indeed. It's frustrating indeed. You can, you can uh, assess the level of frustration the people have s felt from the results at the last generally uh, presidential elections. Right? It's unprecedented vote was given against the government. Yes. Now then, uh, I was going to say this to you. Isn't, is this all endemic of a lack of leadership? Is this, is this, is this the crux of the problem? I, 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 would, I, should, I, I should think so. Uh, when you say leadership, I, I don't say it's just the parliamentarians, but the no, entire no. society, yeah. there is a failure on the part of the authorities, the 
the, the, there are, we, have, we have no role models, we have no guidance, we have no, the, I think the people are just uh, lost in this uh, world of uh, abuse uh, and corruption and you know, selfish uh, kind of uh, leadership we see in the country. It is just self-oriented. Mm. You know, I, I think uh, what I feel or I see is that the parliamentary system, all these systems are designed for different kind of thinking. Yeah. But they, they anticipated the kind of leaders we are, we are now stuck with. Yeah. And now with, with the kind of leadership we have now, I think system also becomes a mockery of what it's supposed to be. I mean, you know, we, we have the 19th uh, Amendment. Uh, there are some good parts of it. But there are also parts that make it almost impossible to govern for anyone. Yes, like what we saw the deadlock uh, last year. That's right. Uh, between the um, executive and the legislature. Yeah, there should be a mechanism of resolving these uh, deadlocks because they are not good for the country. And how do you explain the, the fact that the, one, the side that went to court and said, hey, hang on you guys, you lot haven't got 113, so we're, going, we're trotting off to court and complete with diplomats in tow, yeah. uh, traveling here, there, and everywhere, and even being allowed to enter parliament, where, which is close to the people of this country, but oh, especially open for, uh, the, for visitors only from the diplomatic community, and all that business. Then they went to court, and there was all this drama. And then finally, they were all left an abandoned mm. ship. I, I suppose when they saw the results, the reality dawned. What, the results in presidential elections. Presidential elections. And uh, they realized that they had no mandate to govern any longer. So where is the mandate for the former prime minister, the current leader of the United National Party, Rani Wickremesinghe? Where is the mandate for him to carry on, Lind? As the leader of the UMP? Yes. You should ask the <laughs> Well, uh, uh, I mean, he's not, he's not going. That's what I mean about leadership. You know, when the top is acting silly, you can't expect the rest to, uh, to fall into place. You, you can't expect, you can't yeah, have a yeah. legitimate expectation of that. Right? So we're, we're in a situation where uh, he is the leader uh, 25 plus uh, years and 25 plus uh, electoral yeah, I think the saying that we get the leaders we deserve. I think it's ultimately the fault of whoever, that organization. Now, see, even if you take the case of Mrs. Banda Nayak, yeah. I mean, I, I think as long as she was alive, the SLP would have never considered any other leader, right? That is the way they thought. Right. They were made to believe that the only leader around was Mrs. Banda Nayak. Yeah. Now, the UMP also seems to be thinking or has thought so for a long time, this is the leader. So maybe there's something very fundamentally wrong with the way we uh, look at these things. I, I, I see that even in the private sector, certain um, uh, chairman, CEO, they have a very long tenure uh, in office. Mm. Whereas the um, share value may be going down or the, the certain uh, stakeholders may be unhappy, but still it's, it's maneuvered in such a way that they, these are public companies, yeah. but they, they retain their position for very long periods. Regardless of the results, regardless of how the company is faring, so I, I, I suppose there is a some issue with the way we look at things. We need a systemic overhaul. I, 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 I mean, maybe a different way of thinking, um, because a person who leads is there. The yeah. person is a stakeholder. If he doesn't deliver, um, let's uh, thank you very much for your questions. Uh, by the way, on Newsline Live, you can uh, SMS your questions to. 0772-300-305. And uh, right on cue, Hush, just put it up on your screen. So here we go. Uh, um, welcome to the world of television, Mr. Pereira. We admire your contributions on legal issues. Do you think the Bar Association of Sri Lanka is doing enough to ensure the hard independence of judiciary? Yeah. By association. Well, I think independence of the judiciary is primarily a matter for the judiciary. Yeah. But Bar also should actively support any effort to strengthen their independence and so on. 
Uh, I, I don't uh, really you, follow the say, question. Uh, no. Do you think that the Bar Association is doing enough to ensure the independent, uh, to, indi uh, the, to ensure a hard and independent judiciary? Well, it's it's a it's a difficult question, but uh, I think independence is very often one thing. The institutional uh, support that is vital for independent in institution should be created and so on. Yeah. But very often independence is a matter of individual choice. Now, the bar being practicing lawyers, uh, how they can support uh, independent. But I think it's mostly a matter for the judges and the institution they represent to assert their independence and act independent. No, you're talking. Yeah. No, you're talking. Because now there's a suggestion that the appointment of judges should be made by the president in consultation with the prime minister, or not even. But I thought that we have all these independent commissions. Is that a good After thing? After the 19th Amendment, they got to go through the uh, commission. commission. Yeah, commission. Yes. Yeah. But they, there is some suggestion that they must, that is also part that That's also, I got politis politicized. And yes, so party. is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, again, I don't think we have, we can ever have a foolproof method of appointing a person which is acceptable to all segments. Yeah. But ultimately, it's up to the judge to act yeah. independent. Because once he's appointed there, he can act independently and he must, he must act independently. Right. It is not just enough saying, I'm independent, but he must, be seen, to be, be seen to be acting independently. Now, right. for instance, uh, it's a sad thing in a way for this whole system that cases happen only when there's a change of government. Right. Now, what happened to those offenses which are supposed to have been committed earlier? That's, why, that's it, you um, see. Why, why wasn't any action taken about those uh, so-called offenses? Why, why should there be a change of government for these offenses to come, come to the fore? That, that's an uh, amazing thing. It's a, it's a, it's a, bad, it's a sad it thing. Wasn't, isn't it also sad, or was sad at the time, that uh, you know, for the FCID to uh, investigate a case, that the, the, uh, the decision whether to investigate a case or not was made by some committee seated in temple trees. I mean, that's an absurdity because Attorney General is the authority who should... Now, Attorney General is supposed to be a quasi-judicial officer. Yeah. He's independent. I mean, that is a system we have. Yeah. I mean, that power is used up by some other committee. Yeah. I mean, that goes against in the face of the system. It goes against all uh, decency or legality of a system. It's all norms, everything out the window. I, mean, I don't know whether it happened like that or whether it just... Uh, um, Something. Well, they, they hardly denied, but it was true. They had the committee, uh, and they they decided they did a bit bit of thing. You know, when you make um, spaghetti and you put it in there, and you 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 put it into the sieve, and you get the water out. So this is what they were doing. They put all these cases in and said, "Oh well, um, we'll take that, but no, not that. This one, this one. What is this? That, this is not law. That goes against every principle of justice." You know? People it's are, hotly denied, yeah, of they are, they are setting off uh, grudges. They are, you know, it's, it's all wrong. If that happened, if that yeah. if that happened, they must an, they must be answerable to the judicial system how they were able to do that and get away with it. But I don't know if that is um, this, this is just a. I think uh, we have a clarification for uh, from the person who sent this uh, that last question. Yeah. It it says that uh, do you think the bar association is doing enough to ensure? Uh, the the hard-earned independent judiciary is maintained. That was the question. Whether well, whether the Bar Association is doing enough to maintain the independence of the ju judiciary to encourage it. Do you think there's any adupadu? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think the Bar Association... Is, I, even for the bar, it is in their interest that they have independent judiciary. Right. Know, if they undermine the judiciary, the whole purpose of a legal profession is undermined. Yeah. So I can't see the bar actively undermining the independence of the judiciary. Yes. But as to what they should do, uh, right? Here we go. Uh, let's say this. There's another question. Uh, another st um, question is very long. Um, 
Here we go. Uh, I know that the content of the program is based uh, on politics, but frankly, I don't think any of our politicians are honorable. They don't know the meaning of honor. To them, ethics and morals are bad words. We have to gr uh, grin and bear. Um, and then, what do, you, what do you have to say, Ravi? Uh, Certainly, I agree uh, with that sentiment because when you look at the, the reality of the kind of people who are, like you say, our leaders, are they honorable? Are they role models? It's a good question. I mean, that Gosit was saying, they are, most of them don't deserve that uh, description. Yeah. But um, what, what, is the, what is the solution? Is that what he's asking? Or? Yes, well, I was ask, going to ask you, what is the solution? What do you, as Citizen Pereira, what would you like to see? I would like to see a, a, a society which looks at these things differently. I think the, ultimately the responsibility lies to the people, the water, the, you know, uh, kind of people. Now, uh, very often, m most of us uh, criticize this, the so-called not so honorable leaders. But when it comes to getting our child into school or something like that, we go to them and we expect them to subvert the system and get the child into school or get somebody out of the police or, or of custody. Or you know, it, it, the people expect all kinds of things from the uh, 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 the politician, and then we la turn back and later on say they are dishonorable or they are not honorable. But is that? So where does the so the people also have also a role have, have, a, have a, I mean their education I think you know, programs like this I think play a very vital role in uplifting the people's uh, attitude too yes because I think programs such as these uh, and many uh, things like this are uh, required to spur uh, yeah. uh, the public uh, interest they are. Uh, awareness. Uh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Of the issues, a lot of them are not aware of these uh, the elements that um, ultimately work against them. Because they are they in, they set it in motion. But these these presidential commissions, for example, uh, you know, I'm forced to ask this: Is there? I know you wrote a nice appreciation about uh, the late yeah, well, uh, Sky Warden and so on, but it's not really. It's not about him. This is about the presidential commission. Is there any good? Because what does it do? One thing I know is a colossal waste of <laughs> a colossal uh, investment of public money, and, uh, and somebody should be responsible. To, you must tell the people what what they achieved with this uh, investment of money, what the sittings achieved. Is if the ultimate now we had the Sri Lankan airline, so many inquiries. Then this, and ultimately, what is achieved at the end of the day? So, so exactly. So the Sri Lankan Airlines inquiry, the last one anyway. Uh, they they announced it, but they didn't start from the beginning. Then they started, you know, back to front sort of thing. They they should have gone in. It would have been much better if they went into all that money that was paid out in the la the tenure of the last government. Not to say that the Mahinda Rajapaksa uh, governance of Sri Lankan Airlines with the brother-in-law in place was any better. It was not better. You know, we we remember all those things, but. They were in the past. You need to start with the present, address that, cut your losses there or whatever, identify yeah, yeah. what you can salvage, yeah, yeah. and then can go on to the yes. back because you're going to learn from, yeah. from example. Yes. But of course, you, we cannot be conducting inquiries into every, I mean, infinitely. Each and everything. And infinitely go on inquiring into matters. There yeah. must be some cutoff point and we must bring it to a closure. Yeah. But uh, at least we like to see results from all these inquiries and see. Uh, the public must be aware how even this uh, uh, sovereign bonds issue. I mean, it's, it's all that was public money. So, well, you know, um, uh, thank you for your. M most of the questions we're receiving are uh, are the same, uh, the same, uh, the same theme, the same sort of uh, uh, where it's coming. But you know. Um, I, the, the reason I'm, I'm saying all this is that the, it, there is this sense of frustration, uh, Ravi Pereira, that we, for our, our, uh, let's, just, uh, let's just take us, news first. We have invested hours and hours and hours of uh, our resources 
and our shareholders' monies um, to bring to light and make the public aware of various things going on. And it is frustration at its best when four and a half years later you still see the people accused of the bond uh, or who've been held responsible by a presidential yeah. commission inquiry still on the outside and larding, dying here, there and everywhere. I'm sorry, I find that really offensive. It's also possible that the unseen links between various political parties, especially their leadership, uh, the status quo, so on, is very powerful. It's a, it's a network you can't sometimes break through. Well, that, and probably there you go. <laughs> and, do you know, Ravi, you, you're not being as open as uh, you should be because you've just said this. Unseen links between various political I mean, parties. Uh, you can be because the average person like you has come to that conclusion. That's what's happened. I mean, it's, it's a reasonable assumption that there are. Uh, why aren't these people brought to book? Why isn't there a closure to these these matters? That's right. Maybe money talks. Obviously, money talks. Well, obviously, money talks yeah. because, uh, and I haven't even gone into this business about the Sri Lankan cricket. But you know, uh, what isn't it? Don't people find it funny that you had bank accounts in Mexico? Then. They know about cinnamon, and they can have our cinnamon from Sri Lanka, but cricket in Mexico? Why have a bank yeah. account in Mexico, for him's yeah. sake? And then it's amazing that the committees in those uh, sporting bodies and so on don't raise these questions, bring it to the... I mean, why are they so passive about the, all this? And, you know, there's the... You know, there's, there's no... There's no... There is no governance. Oh. How, because... You know, now these, now uh, Mr. Rajapax has come in here, now with the mandate, and then we have Vijay Dawson Rajapax. I don't know whether this is for optics or whether, he's, whether there's any good out of this thing. But nobody's interested in gaining. We're, can't we gain something? Can't we have legal closure on these things? Okay. The legal system is very complex. There are rights that the suspects enjoy. There are systems you have to follow. So it's, it's not, it, it can't be sort of uh, hurried, uh, sorry. It can't unseem, be hurried uh, by uh, me. Unseemly manner, but there should be closure. There should be, now this is long enough, four and a half years. And uh, we are still struggling, uh, you know, talking about governance. Now, yeah. the other day, uh, this is sort of completely outside of this area, but the other day a friend of mine was telling me that he went to the Colombo municipality to pay rates, right? And yes. then, on the event, that was on the 1st of January, that he found it very difficult to ma make the payment because they were all at, they were all at um, New Year celebrations eating their kiribat. Right. Mm. So now, the check can wait. Yes, now, now see, can you imagine? Now the government is desperately in need of money, the Colombo municipality needs their money, here's a man who goes to pay the money to them and so this is this is also governance, right? Yeah. So our bureaucracy, our 1.5 million public service. So these are all things that we have to look at. Yeah. Uh, when you look at this concept of governance, you know. So maybe if that same lethargic attitude you have in this place also prevail in the judicial system. Also, we just let it happen. It just goes on forever. Do you know, Ravi? I'm, uh, I must apologize for being so uh, so rude. Uh, I've got this lovely. Pot of tea. It's a very nice tea. Thanks to so, my yeah. colleagues at Jones. Yeah. Uh, and uh, please help yourself to some uh, some of the finest uh, tea that's going. Sadly you so. know, yeah. uh, Jones tea. Thank you very much to the folks at Jones for giving us this wonderful tea. And I like to say this to you, Ravi. Um, thank you for coming on Newsline live. It's the first uh, time you've yeah. you, the first time you've been on live television. You've done well. I do hope that you you read all, all about this business about the uh, the constitutional amendments, and perhaps you may come back on uh, on this program, or a, we have more intense programs like um, Face the Nation, which is uh, hosted by Shami Rasuddin, and we hope to discuss most of these things uh, uh, in greater depth, because we must keep it in the public eye. Because if we don't, uh, we will all fail. Certainly. We have a responsibility towards the people, and we are here for that. 
and uh, we hope that people like you will uh, join in encouraging transparency, accountability, and legal closure. And we do hope you'll come back with us. Thank you very much, uh, Ravi Pereira. And uh, that's the way it was on uh, Newsline Live today. Take care. Have a wonderful day ahead. And of course, God bless. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali.